okay, we're back at the Atom here now with our repair data drive. And we're going to put it inside the Atom itself and test it. I'm going to use a handheld camera so you can see what I'm doing over here. I'll put it up in a little pop-up up here so you can see it. So let's open it. Sorry for the shaky cam. All right, so what you do is you first off you pop the cover open. See, I got a data drive in there. Over in here, you can see how they hook up. You got data one, data one, data two, data two. Don't mix them up. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this one in here. I'm going to put the camera down, then I'll restart it again so you can see how I hooked it up. Data one is the, I'm sorry, data two is the big one. This one's going to go into two way. I'm going to, this is going to be the second data drive. So I got to get up in here. Make sure you put it in the right way. I got to look at the other one to be sure I'm getting it right. Line this up in there. It's kind of hard leaning over the bench here. Maybe I should have moved the atom forward, but I didn't want to change the setup around too much just for this one drive. So. That one's in. Now I'm gonna put this other one, which is 2B, into the front. This one's not the same size as the other one, so you gotta be careful. This one like centers itself. It doesn't go all the way to one side or the other. So just watch what you're doing. That drives in place. I can just leave it sitting here. It ain't going nowhere. Now let's turn the camera back on so I can show you what I did. It's plugged in there. All right, well, let's get ready to start her up. Ah, got to grab a tape. Let me grab that tape over here. Data pack. Let's call it what it is, Bill. Millie. Bill, same difference. Start it up. Make sure we don't get no blue smoke. All right, let's put in... CPM in here. Reset the computer box. I could just boot off a data pack on that one too, but I want to do the process. Put this one in here. This is going to be drive D. Remember, A, B, C, D. I ain't got a B right here right now. So let's just do directly drive D and see if she works. That's not good. You don't have to close the door. You hear that? That means there's something else wrong with this drive besides just, sometimes it will clear itself out. I'm gonna try to just run it with no tape in there and if I can get it to What I'm doing is I'm pushing the sensor and it lets it know that there's a data pack in there. Looks like this thing has much more or many more problems besides just the encoder wheel having melted. That could be anything as simple, anything from the read write head is not working to Come on. Take this door off the front so I can get in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to clean it. Maybe the read right head is dirty. Normally it doesn't stop that quick though, but it's possible it's not sensing a tape in there and it's just stopping. But it could be almost anything at this point. That's bad. So what I'm doing is I'm cleaning the read right head. Nothing came off of it. Cleaning with isopropyl alcohol. We'll put a tape in there. I'm pretty sure it's not the read write head because when I had the tape out and I was doing it, it still acted like there's broken. So let's just try it again. Hmm. Okay, we're not doing good yet. Let's do this. Take the 
disc out, turn the drive off, and unhook the drive. So we're going to boot it straight from data pack. I'm going to see if I can force the Atom to start this one up. Put that there. There you go. Maybe if I run it a little, it'll clear the motor, or maybe it won't. I've had that issue before. Stop. Let's try a different data pack. Uh, da, 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 da. These are the ones I made earlier today. So let's try another one. Let's see if this one works. Let's try to put it in correctly. Yeah, settle down. I do believe this data drive is bad. You see, it's just fast forwarding all the way to the end. That's almost as if it's not reading the head at all. Let me just verify that I got everything plugged in correctly. Shut all the power off. Let me look in here just to be sure. You know, I'm going to unhook this one. And I'm going to remove, unplug the one that's built into it also. And I'm just going to, when this one is drive one, let's just eliminate the fact that I don't have a problem with drive two. I don't know if I've done a second data drive on this atom as of yet. My main atom system, I run lots on it. My main one I've had for five years. I beat that one in hack and back. But this one I bought purposely just for here. So let's try it again. This time, hmm, hmm, hmm. See, it messed up my tapes. So now I have to actually fast forward them a little bit. Well, let's give this a shot first. I got one more data pack. See, I would have to fast forward it a little bit because I don't know if you could see, I'll bring it up a little closer to the camera. It's taking it all the way to the end. So if I put this in there, it may not be able to find the magnetic tape and it just stops dead on you. So I'm gonna try one more. Don't start it up with a data pack in it. Or else that EMP pulse will fry it, just like it did to the matrix. All right, so let's give this a shot. Sounds just as bad. I do believe this drive is dead, or this drive is parts. Hear it? It's as if it's not reading anything at all. You can stop now. We know these are good because I made these earlier. On a separate video, I showed them being made, and actually, when I was done with the videos, I put them in here. I did a lot of testing because I didn't want to be confused later on wondering why it's not working. So. We obviously have an issue with this. I'll take it apart again off camera just to make sure nothing came loose and nothing's hooked up wrong, but I'm positive it's all back together. We'll see what happens. Then again, we may just end up with a dead data drive that has a really good encoder wheel. I'll shut this off. Okay, so I'm back over here at the bench. And I took it apart. I just wanted to see, maybe a wire came loose. And I discovered, actually what happened is I relied on the original double-sided sticky tape in there, and that didn't work, so things popped around. Hopefully, nothing's ruined. So I'm gonna have to pull this apart again, and repair that. And this time I'm actually gonna stick it down with some tape. So let's get that out of the way for now. Yeah, this is flopping around, I don't like the holes there. I'm going to put it the other side. I'm going to put the screws on the other side here. I'm just hoping that my encoder wheel didn't get damaged. We shall see. Ooh, everything's still together. Nice. Very nice. Okay. 
So now what I got to do is I actually have to seat this thing in there. And I realize I don't have any double-sided sticky tape here. It's at my house. I do have some double-sided foam sticky tape, which I'm going to try to give that a shot and see if that works. Where did the scissors go? I just had the scissors a moment ago. They're not there. Oh, how'd they end up down here on the shelf? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very small piece of this and I'm going to see if I can make this work. Very small piece. I'm hoping that the thickness of it won't be a hindrance to it working. We'll test to make sure before we put everything right together. So what I'm going to do is take this Put that right here. Pull that off. And see if I can slide her in. So now it's where I want it to be. Now let's take this, put that back on here. Remember, make sure we get the axle in there. It's not sticking in place. I may end up having to glue this one, which I don't want to do, but I may end up having to do it. Yes, it's just not staying there. That's what I want it to be right there. I can get you to stay there for a second. I may be able to lock you in place with the screws. No, I'm gonna have to. All right. I'm gonna go off camera to fix this one. All right, I tried a number of different things off camera, different versions of double-sided tape and stuff, and nothing really wanted to make this thing stick in place. So in the end, I ended up using just a very small drop of super glue to make it stay. I put it on the bottom very light, and then I put it in there and let it dry. It's not gonna hold it in place permanently. If somebody needs to get it out, they can, but I'm going to assume that this drive will probably never have to be taken apart again. So now let's put this back on top. Make sure we line everything up correctly. Push it into place. That's seated a lot better that time. That moves, so that's not stuck. Let's take our screws, and I'm gonna put them on this side this time. I'm thinking maybe the holes on the other side are a little worn out from age. So let's put that in there. Let's put this one over here. Now, when this thing's tightened down correctly, it locks, it holds the light sensor down so it can't move. I don't want to over tighten and break things. It is, you don't have to torque it into place, it's not a car. But you do have to tighten it up. So, yeah. No movement. No movement. Still moves. All right, now we're going to put this back together in here, like we did before. Remember which one does what again. 
that one first. This little doodad there is in the way. Then that one. Bring it over here so you can see a little better. Then black one. Then the green one. Okay. Now the RF shield. Move that one in place. Come on. You know what? I think this little thing is causing that to put stress on that. So let's get rid of that right now. Careful, though. Really not getting in there too well with this, am I? Let's try this a different way. I don't want to cut the wires. <laughs> I can get some wire cutters and bring them in up. So let's just take that. I can see what I'm doing here is putting pressure on that. Wires down there and I don't like it. <laughs> Nothing broke, right? Nope. You didn't move, did you? You're still good. All right, let's get this thing out of here. I can leave it up there. No, let's just... Goodbye. This does look like it's been repaired before in the past. I think this is the first time I've ever seen one with heat shrink tubing on them. Right, so, view there as such. Then here, like such. Get back down there, like such. I'm hoping that we didn't stress that thing. Let's just feel. That feels good. All right, now let's put these back in. This one's gonna give me issues again. Connecting probe. Oh, wait, wait. Let's do the right thing, though. The right thing. This pain in the neck. Through there. Through there. I don't know if anybody can hear the rain. We got rain today outside. No snow, just rain. Let's try this now. You there. You're going to give me issues connecting or are you going to snag into this? Again, you're not tightening up all the way inside there. You must be stripped out. could test this without putting it all back together but well it's hopefully that it's gonna work when we put it back together I'm going to assume that was the problem that the sensor was moving so it couldn't it just wasn't working right it wasn't picking up any movement maybe of the wheel so it's like spinning it trying to figure out is there a tape in here and nothing was happening come on yeah. I'm gonna shut the camera off and we're gonna move over to the other one after I put these screws in all right so we're back I went ahead and plugged it in yet I haven't turned it on I used the cassette deck I had here to rewind these so that they weren't stuck at the end from before you can't do that with a normal data pack because it doesn't have the hole for the cast in so you end up having to use the old pencil to get it moving so let's give this a shot here again I'm going to make sure we're plugged in correctly I've plugged this in the drive one 
This one's unplugged for now. Can you see the things up there? Something I learned, just as an, as an aside, something I learned before, a while back. You can only plug one of these cables, the bigger one, into one slot. So that one's easy. But the other one can go in, can go in either slot. So what, had, what I ended up doing by mistake is I put my second data drive in on another computer and I plugged in the big cable into data drive two like I wanted to. Or actually I plugged it in, it was the plugging in as the first drive. I plugged it into data drive one like I wanted to. Then the smaller cable, instead of putting it into the one for the data drive one, I put it into the one for data drive two. Turned it on, read no problem. I go to write to it, wrote no problem. Or so I thought. Nothing was ever put on tape. Never gave me an error. It just never wrote anything to tape. Interesting little side bit there. So anywho, let's boot this up. No blue smoke, that's a good idea, a good thing. Open that up, let's put the data pack in there. Let's see if she works or if we're gonna say that this drive is bad. Put it in there, hit the reset. She's spinning. Hear how quiet it is now? Hear that? It was slow and then it's fast which means that it read a little bit of the tape to find out where the tape was index wise. Now it's racing to find track zero, block zero, which is the start of tape. Here it stop. It stopped, took a peek to see what was there. Fast forward again, stopped again. See, slowed down I mean. And it found where block zero is, now it's reading. And we should end up with it booting up CPM. Voila, CPM. It's an empty CPM. I didn't put anything on these, but it's empty. So we now know it reads. Let's test if it writes. To do that, I'm gonna use a command that's built into CPM called save, which lets you save a block of memory as a file. So first off, let's do a directory, and it should say no file. Mm -hmm. Very quiet drive too. Very clean. No file. So let's make a file. Save. I'm just gonna save one block or one page, which is 256 bytes, one record page. Page comes from, I believe you use page in 6502. That CPU, but save one temp, which means I'm gonna save one block of record. You know, I didn't do something here. Let me just come over here. I didn't think of capturing the video so you could see it. So what I've done here, as you can see now, is I did a directory. Now I'm gonna do a save one, or one block, one page, into the file temp. So what it's doing is it's gonna save 256 bytes starting at byte 256 through 511 to disk, or to tape, and call it temp. It should be creating a file or a directory entry at the same time. So let's just see what we got here. If I do a directory, there it is. It worked. I can try to type it. It's gonna be garbage, but this will at least let me know that I can read what I wrote. But since I'm able to read the directory, I do know that I wrote to the tape and I was able to read back off of it, which means that the read write head on here is working fine. Let's just type this. It's gonna be a whole bunch of garbage. They just dumped out what was in on there. It's interesting, it got different color text too. So there we go. We now have a working data drive. Had a melted encoder wheel, totally useless. Now has a fixed encoder wheel. And as you saw, it's not hard to fix the melted encoder wheel. This one right here. As long as you start out with one that's fixable. This one fell apart as we were doing it and and in the end, we couldn't use it, so I had to use a spare. But if you're careful, and it's not broken, you can fix it. And you can recover this here. If you have a data drive that doesn't work and you want it fixed, contact me. I mean, I fix them for people too. I only charge like 25 bucks as long as all the parts are there. It takes me like an hour to fix it. You ship it to me, I send it back to you. So there we go. Data drive working. Have a great day.